Hello friends, Jim here. Welcome to Science Talk. I want to share with you this article that appeared on the online publication EOS and um, it's a bit troubling. Plants worldwide reach a stomata stalemate. Research unveiled a surprising plateau in plants' ability to absorb carbon through the stomata, which could mean more carbon left in the atmosphere. Uh-oh. Hey, here's a photo of some uh, water vapor, a whole bunch of uh, you know, uh, coniferous trees, deciduous trees, so forth. Plants exchange water vapor and carbon dioxide with the atmosphere. The underside of a leaf is equipped with many thousands of openings. Uh, uh, the plural is stomata, the singular is stoma. These are microscopic pores that uh, act as pathways for carbon dioxide and water vapor. Now, there are a couple of what's called guard cells that actually control whether or not uh, the stomata, the stoma, uh, opens or closes. They have a couple of guard cells that tend to be like bean shaped, what have you, but they open and close the opening. So as climate change causes temperatures to rise, stomata are narrowing, reducing the plant's ability to take in carbon, according to a new study published in Science. So all of those ding dongs who say, well, you know, more CO2 is great for plants, it's plant food. Nope. They, once again, they do not know science. Gram for gram, a plant loses far more water every day than any terrestrial animal. 99% of the water taken in by roots is released into the air as water vapor. It's released through the stomata in a process called transpiration. When the stomata are open, water vapor travels out, carbon dioxide travels in. The ratio of carbon assimilation per unit of water loss is called water use efficiency. New research says that globally it has stalled. Previously, many scientists thought that in the face of rising emissions, water use efficiency would increase. According to the study's lead authors, because higher Atmospheric carbon concentration would mean more carbon would enter the stomata. Basically, talking about you know pressure gradients and just forcing the the gas in, into the plants. What we show is different," said study co-author Jing Feng Zhao, an Earth system scientist at the University of New Hampshire. Global average plant water use efficiency has stabilized or leveled off. Carbon emissions do not happen in a vacuum. It's, they take place in a complex system. Yes, CO2 is increasing, temperature is increasing, air is becoming drier, and this is where vapor pressure deficit comes in, said Vivek Aurora, a climate scientist at Environmental and Climate Change Canada, not involved in the study. Vapor pressure deficit is the difference between the current water vapor concentration in the air and the maximum amount of water vapor it could hold. Warmer air has the potential to hold more water vapor, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will. Remember the old, uh, you wanted to measure humidity in, uh, in, in the old school days? You, you went out there with the wet bulb. And then the difference in temperature between the wet bulb and the dry bulb, you can then calculate the humidity. Well, humidity is really what? A measure of water vapor concentration. High vapor pressure deficit means the atmosphere is dry. This said study co-author Fei Li, an uh, earth scientist at the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences. That will lead to a loss of water and so the stomata will be closed, not totally closed, 
but a bit to reduce the water loss. So basically, the stomata will close partway or all the way to prevent further water loss, but when it does so, it is not able to take up carbon dioxide. And when plants close or mostly close the, the stomata, that reduce the ability to take up CO2. So the author studied global water use efficiency using 24 machine learning models to extrapolate data from ground-based FluxNet sites around the world. FluxNet instruments measure CO2 and water moving between ecosystems and the atmosphere. The trend was consistent among all models. Water use efficiency increased from 1982 to 2000 and then leveled off despite rising carbon emissions in the atmosphere. This photo is an example of a FluxNet station. So it's, it's measuring various uh, uh, parameters, takes the data, and uh, puts it into the model. So carbon emissions with nowhere to go. Though the land and the ocean currently absorb about half of carbon emissions, Aurora explained, rising vapor pressure deficits would force plants to keep the stomata closed to conserve water, potentially limiting how much carbon plants take in. The new results indicated that the trillions of plants making up the terrestrial biome began doing that more than 20 years ago, guarding against water loss due to climate change. If land slows how much carbon it takes up, climate change will accelerate because more carbon dioxide will stay in the atmosphere. What we are trying to project is if we keep emitting at this rate, what the future of CO2 concentration is going to be. The results also have implications for understanding observed trends in Earth's changing landscapes. There have been quite a few papers over the past few years indicating that runoff has been increasing at regional and continental scales. Some scientists have speculated that increased global water use efficiency led to more water in the water cycle, which ultimately caused the increased runoff. But according to the new findings, water use efficiency has stalled, so there has to be another reason for this development. So to sum up, increasing air temperature is creating a higher potential in the vapor pressure. In other words, the gradient is increasing with the result that water loss through the stomata of the plants is increasing. But the plants, to offset the increased loss, because then they wilt and die, they close their stomata to conserve the water. But in doing so, they are not drawing in CO2. You don't draw in CO2. Well, first of all, that's going to impact photosynthesis, productivity, and so forth. But you're then doing what? Leaving more CO2 in the atmosphere, creating another positive feedback loop. And there's another thing to keep in mind. At night, when the sun goes down, plants respire. So now they're going to take the carbohydrate they made during the photosynthetic process during the day. They're going to break that down and then they're going to release CO2 in water. That's, that happens when you break down carbs. You add oxygen to it and you get CO2 in water. And they release that through the stomata. So plants do not just only take in CO2. They respire at night when they, when they release CO2. A lot of people tend to forget that aspect of their physiology. Again, as I said at the outset, those people who say, well, carbon dioxide is plant food. That can't be a bad thing. We have CO2 in the air. We'll have more plant growth. Eh, well, wrong. And then you toss in the, the oceans are swarming so much that the CO2 is starting to outgas back to the atmosphere because 
Well, gas solubility decreases with increased water temperature, and the oceans are warming up. So plants aren't, gonna, aren't taking in as much carbon because they close their stomata to conserve water, and then the oceans toss in, you know, outgas more CO2. This is all going to lead to increasing temperatures. Let the tetration begin. Tetration is rapid exponentiation. And we're seeing all these positive feedback loops exponentiating and increasing so. So this is a bit troubling. But there it is. Thank you for your time.